Hi, welcome. Today I'll be talking about RDS for Oracle with Manage Oracle Data Guard Switchover. My name is Nick Wagner. I'm a senior product manager on the RDS Oracle service team. Uh, as I go through this presentation, uh, we've got a couple of experts on the line that are listening in. Feel free to post your questions to chat uh, and we'll get them answered as soon as possible. Uh, at the end of this presentation, which is a pretty court, short presentation, uh, we do have a very quick survey that we'd love for you to fill out. Uh, kind of tells us how we did, what we can do to improve. Uh, it's really short, honestly, should take you uh, less than a minute to fill out. So what are we gonna talk about today? Uh, the first thing that we'll cover are some of the benefits of using Oracle Data Guard on RDS for Oracle, uh, as opposed to the traditional MAS approach. Uh, we're going to talk about how the actual switchover works. Uh, I've got a quick demonstration that I'll go through, uh, which I use the console to perform a switchover. Uh, and I'll also cover some additional ways to perform a switchover through a command line interface in the APIs. So what are some of the benefits of Oracle Data Guard on RDS for Oracle? Uh, well, it is a proven technology. You know, it's something that all of the Oracle DBAs out there know and love. Uh, it really is the standard for providing disaster recovery and high availability for single instance uh, Oracle Enterprise Edition databases, as well as providing for DR for Oracle Rack systems. Within the RDS for Oracle environment, when we configure Oracle Data Guard for you, it's using max performance mode under the covers, so it's very low overhead, uh, and it also provides with very good disaster recovery capabilities. Uh, it also does not require a license for Active Data Guard. Uh, because it's Data Guard, it does require Oracle Enterprise Edition version of the database. Uh, but uh, the optional component of this is to open it up as a read only environment. Uh, but that's not required for the uh, switchover capabilities. That's also very flexible. Uh, so, with this switchover capability, you can do cross region or even cross availability zones within the same region. And it also allows for you to create multiple replicas or standby databases. Uh, when I go through the console uh, and show the demo, um, I'm only going to use one replica. But when you go to actually perform the switchover, you decide which replica or which standby database you'll be switching over to in the process. So what are some of the use cases for Data Guard? Well, one of the big ones is it allows you to test your disaster recovery procedures. You would be surprised how many customers I've spoken to over the last 18 years uh, working with Oracle. And I spent five years on Oracle's maximum availability architecture PM team. So many times I've talked to customers and like, oh, yeah, we have a DR process or we have a DR procedure. And then when you follow up and ask, well, when was the last time you tested it? Most of them haven't. You know, the last thing you want to do is actually get caught uh, unaware and try to run through a process you're not familiar with in the middle of a disaster. So being able to test out your data guard switchover, to test out your DR environment, make sure that the application can connect to that system, make sure all the uh, integrated components are working well, it's really, really important. And to be able to do this when it's not a critical disaster uh, makes it a lot easier to do and makes it become a, a whole lot simpler when you do have a disaster. Another good use case is for planned maintenance. Now, I'm not really talking about database level maintenance here, but things like changing interconnected components like Route 53, making changes to IAM policies, your application stack. Uh, this allows you to have kind of the two region benefit or multi-region benefit uh, and switch between those regions. Another frequent use case is for follow the sun applications. Uh, I've worked with a few manufacturing companies. One of them actually wanted to rotate the location of the primary database instance to the regions that's closest to the factory workers. Uh, and they have factories in different countries. And so during the end of the shift in the US, they would switch the application to the European data center or the European region. And what this does is this allows them to have the lowest levels of latency for the application when the factory is running. Uh, it also improves their operations and allowed them to produce more uh, devices. Uh, and as a reminder, 
Uh, because we're using a planned data guard switchover, all of this is done with zero data loss and just a few minutes of downtime. So as we prepare the environments for this switchover, there's a couple things that we need to make sure are configured first. So the original standby database can be either mounted, uh, which is your traditional standby approach, or it can also be open for read only, which is the active data guard component. Another uh, requirement is that automatic backups must be enabled on the standby database that you're going to be switching over to. Both the primary and the standby that you're switching over to must be in an available state, and they do not have any pending maintenance activities. Uh, and this would be things like a patch waiting to be applied uh, or some sort of background process waiting to be completed. The other thing is that the standby database must be in the replicating state. Because this is a zero data loss process, uh, we actually enforce the zero data loss, and we're not going to allow you to fail over uh, or do a planned failover to a standby database that is not in sync with your primary. You can also have multiple bystander replicas. And this would be a scenario where I have maybe one primary database and four or five different standbys, all open for read-only activity. Uh, the standbys that you're not switching over to can be in any state. Uh, again, so we're just enforcing the rule that uh, there's no data loss for the environment that we're failing over to or switching over to. So what does this kind of look like? Uh, so when in this configuration, I've got my primary database configured for read-write mode. I've got asynchronous replication using max performance going over to my replica or my standby. And I'm using the term source and replica uh, because that's what you'll see in the console. Uh, in Oracle terms, we typically use primary and standby. Uh, again, the, both systems are in sync. The maintenance activities are closed. Users are actively making changes to the primary in region one and the standby databases in region two. So the first thing we're gonna do is initiate the failover or the switchover. And this is done either through the console uh, or through API or CLI commands. The next thing that happens in the background is that we're gonna block any new transactions coming in on the primary database. We're gonna then ensure that all transaction logs and all tra following transactions are moved over to the standby database. We're gonna shut down the source database and wait for the MRP to complete on the standby, uh, which will ensure that all the transactions have been rolled forward. Once that's done, uh, we complete the roll transition on the standby. The standby is then opened in a read-write mode, and then you can begin activity on that system again. So again, it's pretty straightforward, uh, very simple in how it works, uh, but because it's done all through a single button click, uh, it's a completely managed process. In the background, because we wanna make this, uh, again, as seamless as possible and we wanna do the right thing, uh, we're following Oracle's best practices, we're, not, we're now going to convert the original primary into a standby database. We actually set up that environment and rebuild it. We then begin shipping over all the redo logs to reinstantiate that environment. Uh, and uh, again, we're configuring it using max performance on the original primary. And then if you want to, as an optional, uh, if you're using Active Data Guard, you can then open that standby for read-only activity. And again, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just how you would expect it to work in a regular environment. Here's my RDS console, uh, and you can see that we have two instances. Uh, both of them are in the available state. We've got one in US East 1B and the other one in US East 2. I've got my source is DG Demo Instance. My replica is DG Demo Replica. Uh, right now, my DG demo instance is my source of my primary, and my replica is my standby database. What we can do is we can look at the connectivity and security tab, uh, and then when we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that these databases are acting as a primary, uh, again, source and the replica standby. And I've got a script that we'll be able to use that allows us to go in and actually look at the names of those databases. Uh, and we can see from the output of this script, my DB unique name, 
is ORCLA, and that's going to be my primary database. And then the other instance is ORCLB, and this is my physical standby. And throughout the whole process, I'll leave that window running in the background, uh, and we'll come back and query it again and show that uh, the two systems have switched over successfully. Okay, now we're going to actually do the switch over. So I'm going to click on the replica environment. This is the standby database that I actually want to switch over to. And so I go into my actions and I click switch over to replica. There's a nice little warning that comes up here uh, saying that uh, once this request is complete, uh, the old standby is going to assume the primary role uh, and the two systems are going to switch statuses. Uh, it also means that you truly want to do this. So let's go ahead and click yes that we want to. And now you can see, as soon as the console refreshes, uh, that the status of these two will be in modifying state. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and, and look at the alert logs. So we go down to the logs for that environment, and we can go through, and we'll actually see uh, all the different commands that were issued to perform this switchover. And so you see just the regular standard uh, Oracle data guard commands uh, that have all been running in the background for you. Oh, and also uh, we've come back and you can see that our replica is already available, which means that our original standby database has now completely transitioned into its primary and is available for activity. Uh, but let's go into the uh, replica or the original primary environment and we'll see that it's still in process of being converted back into that standby and being set up for resynchronization and so things are progressing pretty well going back and looking at our console you see that our replica has already switched back and is now a source system uh, going directly into our sql plus environment we can check those roles again. So you can see here that the DB unique names uh, are still the same. However, they've switched their database roles. And so our ORCLB is now our primary and ORCLA has now become our physical standby. These will often take a couple of additional minutes to show up in the console, uh, but you can see from this process that it occurred very, very quickly. Uh, and it was all very smooth. Uh, with just a single button click, uh, we've been able to do a managed switchover uh, and then have those systems rebuilt in the background as well. So that my source has now become my replica and my replica has now become my primary or my source. Looking into the events, we can see that the switchover to the replica has finished completely. And then once the console refreshes, uh, we'll be able to see that both systems are now available. So as you can see, this entire process has only taken a few minutes. Really, it's performed faster than I can walk you through it. Uh, and you can begin accessing the databases. We can see that uh, within the console, uh, the status of both systems have now switched over to available, uh, which means that everything is back up and running. Our replica is now in sync. Uh, and being replicated from the original source via data guard, our source is also open for read and write activity. We just saw how to do this from the console. Um, you can also monitor the entire switchover progress using the CLI as well. And so a lot of customers would prefer to use that. And so there is a describe DB instance that actually shows what the status is of that environment as they're being switched over. And this includes both changing from the source to a replica and from a replica back to a source. And then of course, as we saw, we could also look from SQL plus uh, to do a select open mode from the database to see uh, that that database is in read write mode. And that's the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time for sticking around. We'll have a short survey that'll be sent out to you very shortly. Thank you all and have a great day.